That same night, we find Brutus at home thinking out loud about the Caesar problem. First, he tells himself that he doesn't have anything against Caesar, personally. I know no personal cause to spurn at him. But he's worried that too much power would make Caesar dangerous. Therefore, think him as a serpent's egg and kill him in the shell. Brutus's servant Lucius brings Brutus one of the fake letters Cassius had thrown through the window. Brutus, thou sleepst. Awake and see thyself. Cassius and a group of conspirators arrive. And they all agree that Caesar must die. Cassius thinks Mark Antony should be killed too. Let Antony and Caesar fall together. But Brutus won't allow it. Let us be sacrificers, but not butchers. Mark Antony can do no more than Caesar's arm when Caesar's head is off. The clock strikes three, and they realize it's getting late. Tis time to part. Cassius worries that Caesar will stay home tomorrow, which would ruin their plan. It is doubtful yet whether Caesar will come forth today or no. But Decius assures them that he can get Caesar to the capital. I will bring him to the capital. They agree to meet at Caesar's in the morning, and the conspirators leave. Then Brutus's wife, Portia, appears. She wants to know what's been troubling Brutus. Make me acquainted with your cause of grief. I am not well in health, and that is all. But Portia knows better. No, my Brutus, you have some sick offense within your mind, which, by the right and virtue of my place, I ought to know of. There's a knock at the door. Brutus asks Portia to leave, promising to tell her everything soon. Portia, go in a while, and by and by thy bosom shall partake the secrets of my heart. The visitor is another conspirator, Caius Ligarius. He's been sick, but wants to know what the plan is. What's to do? A piece of work that will make sick men whole. But are not some whole that we would make sick? That must we also. What it is I will unfold to thee as we are going to whom it must be done. <laughs>